I love how you got you, you managed to really show off like pretty much everything we're we're bringing to the table in those in those intro videos. Those are great guys. Welcome. What's up, everybody, to the OB19 Rome Royal patch ups. My name is Pretty Hair. You're gonna be used to seeing my face, but I got a couple of new ones here with me. We got Alex, Andy, and of course Josh down the end. But I want to give uh, Alex and Andy a chance to kind of tell us a little bit about what they do for the team. Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, trying to fill in for Cret. No, I am just the new cret. So I'm going to be the designer on Realm for now. New cret. The new now cret. with hair. Yes. And no boots, no bike. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. So yeah, I'm going to be making some uh, changes and playing with the game. I want it to be fun. But yeah, I'll be the new designer and world designer. So it's going to be a good time. Awesome. And Andy? Yeah. Um, I was recently brought in as the uh, lead programmer on Realm. Uh, I've been mostly focusing on quality of life, uh, bug fixing. So you see me in some of the streams as high res Junku kind of talking about what people cool. care about, what they're interested in, and just kind of trying to fix what I can to make the game better. So these are the names, guys. These are the faces you got to be used to seeing, asking if you want certain things. They've got an ear to the streets, so to speak. Guys, we got a lot of cool stuff for you. You kind of saw some of it there in the, in the lead-in, in the intro video. But let's go ahead and get into it. I mean, the base drop bundle is going to be the first thing up on our docket, and we saw a little bit of that, I think, teased. Cool new skin, all types of awesome stuff. There's like uh, the chicken skin, of course. These usually come with that the whole package in the bundle. Yeah, this bundle is gonna have five items in it. Um, let's see if we can cut over to gameplay. We'll be able to show them off a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's see if we can get into it. Yeah, man. We've got the skin. We've got the mount. We've got the chicken. The whole kit and caboodle. There is our little teaser out right there. Is that are those glow sticks? Is that what the Those're chicken's holding? Glow sticks. <laughs> I like it. My favorite thing has got to be that mount, though. Looks like it's just ripped fresh off the airplane wing. Strap a seat to it and uh, and rock and roll. We'll get a chance to hop in a game, take a peek at some of this really cool stuff. And, and, and judging by the, the scheme and the skirt, I would say this is a mage skin, Correct. Josh. Correct. Yeah, we maintain some of the same color schemes you're used to with the mage. Add a little pink to it and uh, sort of added a tech vibe since we are in the middle of the next frontier battle pass. There you go. Everything sort of sci-fi and futuristic. I like the skin a lot, the little glowing chicken there on the pill. <laughs> you see that? And you never leave a, home without it. It's got a really cool dagger, too, so it's got that, that custom dagger. Of course, no skin bundle is complete without the dagger, but this does come with more than just the skin and the dagger. Here are a couple of those cool little swipes, got the VFX in there. The mount, the next thing, my favorite part, I think, about this bundle. We're going to hop on that, on that bad boy. The Neon Booster is the name of the game with this one. You've seen motorcycles, but now this is the future of motorcycles. It's like, <laughs> we had like the futuristic bike in the battle pass, and now we've like, mm, how do we take this a step further? You guys, man, you, you continue to kill it over there with the mount. This is a cool one, I like the trail. Is there any mount special or mount emote associated with this one? All right, Kevin, why don't you show us? Let's see, what do we got here? This is a very serene environment to ride around. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is like, oh, that's perfect. You know, I've every mount that. special emo, it's you gotta have a purpose behind it. And this is like, it's almost super toxic in a way. When I kill somebody, <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna do donuts on their corpse or on their chicken, follow them around for a little bit, okay. get the timer down in my head, and kill them just before uh, they come on back. Now, so that's gonna be the mount. That is the techno or the neon booster. Excuse me. Let's take a peek at the chicken skin though. This little bad boy, he's got some glow sticks. <laughs> And of course, the headphones, the sunglasses, the whole kit and caboodle here. Yeah, this is the kind of chicken you'd see at the concert in the opening video there. You know, he's got his glow sticks. He's got this. I like the glow on, sticks. Tactically, the yeah, it's very distracting. You know what I mean? You're like, where am I going? Which way am I moving? It's hard to get a read on this chicken. <laughs> Big headphones there. So that's the mount, the skin, the chicken skin as well. One last look at that bad boy, the beatbox mm. chicken. The puns continue. See, Alex, yeah. that's something you're going to have to continue to bring. The Do community I? cannot be without the cret level puns. Okay, I'll bring them for now. <laughs> yeah, you're a dad. You can help. Yeah. I need it to be embarrassing. So. Okay, man, that is cute. It's a cute boy. The chickens, honestly, I like the mount of this one, but the chickens are usually my, my favorite one. They're, they're mad cute, a lot of fun to play around with. And we do have, of course, the skydive trail that comes along with this bad boy. So as you come on into the map, this uh, this package is gonna get you a new little skydive VFX. There it is. Got the music, the music and the VFX. Love it. So you'd be bumping on your way down, feeling good. Get yourself hyped up, get the heart rate up as we drop on into I believe we're in Jade Gardens at the moment. 
But we do have one more thing to kind of talk about, uh, Alex, before we uh, we part ways with our mage, so to speak. And we, we talked about this a little bit, I think, in the last patch, mm -hmm. about replacing uh, one of the abilities in-game, the wall, just not really finding a home or a lot of usefulness or ended up being pretty niche. I so you guys, guys trying to show us went ahead and uh, tuned. Oh, is that a spray? That's an animated spray. A little spray. animated that, spray for the boys. That's also part of the base drop. Oh, there you go. And uh, if you'll notice, the... the uh, Neon Booster mount was actually in an animated spray that was in the, the next Frontier Battle Pass. So you kind of almost got a tease that it was oh. going to be in there. But <laughs> this is, a, a, yeah, a new animated spray. I like spray that pose. You hit there. the spray, pose exactly like the spray, oh, take yeah. a picture, <laughs> it'll last longer. <laughs> Just take off into the good old distance. That, I think, does it, though, for the contents of the base drop bundle. But back to what I was saying there. About the ability that we, uh, you know, we talked about this wall for a while and uh, just talk to us about why the decision was to change this and, and how you worked your way into what we have now. Yeah, so the wall was one of those things that we found. While and uh, just talk to us about why the decision was to change this and, and how you worked your way into what we have now. Yeah, so the wall was one of those things that we found, you know, situationally players were kind of using it but not the way that we intended. Mm. So a lot of players would kind of wall themselves into places or they would kind of try and do something cool that we didn't always allow at the wall. Gotcha. So we just thought maybe let's change it out because it's not something that players seem to be too excited about and it's kind of a difficult move, right? So yeah. let's do something that uh, can fly through walls and do damage to you and you don't always know where it's coming from unless you listen. So that takes us, in, unless you listen. Unless I can't you listen. wait to see what that means. <laughs> Soul Gust, that is the name of the new mage ability. You, you said you got to listen for it. It could go through walls. Yep. I mean, uh, talk to me about this. What are we going to be expecting him? Yeah, so this is kind of this like ethereal. It flies around. It shoots this big energy blast, and it can go through terrain. It can go through buildings, and it yeah. can go through multiple people. So you really need to be careful. Like if you're trying to hide, get a nice little view up there. Look at her. Just Here's the 2D piece. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of really cool... Yeah, kind of uh, intimidating head there just flying at you, but what it does is that it gotcha. will do a knockback, it will do some damage. Awesome. And it really will, you can't hide from it, right? Because it's like, I'm going to sit behind this wall, I'm in a really tough one on one fight. That person knows where I'm at, they can just send it right through the wall, damage me, knock me back, knock me off, because it's actually a pretty significant knockback. Awesome. Well, let's take a look in game and, uh, and see what the new Soul Gust is capable of. Like Alex mentioned, this is, uh, I guess, a projectile that goes yep. through terrain, goes mm -hmm. through walls, multiple players, even if they're stacked up. We got our nice little, uh, <laughs> our bot, our test subject here <laughs> on the edge of the cliff. Nothing left to live for. I, you know, there's only one way that this can go. And uh, it's like an offering. We got to make sure <laughs> that people are entertained here. And then, <laughs> and off he goes. Later. And there he is. So about 300 damage, not too much because I, I right. think the, the core of this ability is, is obviously the displacement. Yeah, it's a big displacement ability. It's also one of those ones where, you know, at Legendary, it's going to do a little more damage. But I didn't want the ability to feel too powerful. It has a pretty low cooldown, actually. But the, the real crux of this, like you said, is displacement. Like, I want to be able to push people around. I want to be able to disengage or knock someone off something. So, so you say go through walls. Um, when, when you mean terrain as well, is this like rocks? Like, can I be behind that rock right there and blast somebody on the other side of this rock? Absolutely. Okay, so a lot of, I, I think, versatility. And this is a, just makes it very easy to use, I think. Yes. We've yeah, got we our bot on the other side. And I guess the easiest way to read a hit or not is you still can see the damage text yep. through that terrain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is something that we wanted to be able to, like, you know, it's not a super high skill uh, type of ability, but you have to lead it. It doesn't move too fast. Like, you need to line up your shots, but it gives you more opportunities to connect. Perfect for those damn charged sword mm, warriors. Exactly. Get them out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Get them out of here, boys. There's obviously a lot of other things associated with this. Uh, off the top of your head, cooldown, uh, knock, impulse of the knockback. What, yeah. what types of things can we expect to scale? I know you mentioned damage as we go from common yes. to legendary. So uh, the damage starts at, I believe, either 150 or 200 at common, and it can scale all the way up at legendary to 550. And then we also have the knockback starting at around 1,500 units, um, okay. and then it can go all the way up to about 3,000. So it gets pretty um, Pretty meaty. It gets pretty meaty. Uh, and then the other, the distance is always the same. So I didn't want it to be that I'm going to be able to send this across half in of the In terms of, wide. okay, the, yeah. the distance the projectile yes. itself will travel. So in terms of 
cooldown? Are we expecting it to be somewhere in the realm of like a blast shot or yeah, one right. of those movement skills? Yeah, we wanted it to be about, we wanted it to throw off a little faster. So right now it starts at, common is 18 seconds. Okay. And, uh, at the high end legendary is about 12. And obviously, you, had, you know, with the mage and runes in there, yes. you can reduce that bad boy even further. And one other thing associated with this new ability is the new talents. Right. Obviously, the wall had some talents, I think, associated with yep. it, and so now I had to rework some of those. What have you guys gone ahead and done for Soul Gust? Yeah, so the first thing we did is that the wall used to be connected to a talent that would give a reduced cooldown. I took Soul Gust out of that. I didn't think that we needed more cooldowns on this because it was already kind of low. Sure. But what I did do is we added a talent called Creeping Gale. Now what that does is it puts a reveal on the target that you hit for three and a half seconds. Ooh. So it gives you a little bit of awareness of where your enemies are, and it's only on you. You're not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't, your team won't see it, but it's a three, three and a half second reveal is pretty nice. Yeah, you like that, that they, they get hit. And Andy can speak a little bit to that, how we actually knock them back, but it's not yeah. like a, it doesn't launch them into the air, right? Yeah, it's just a straight knockback based on the direction the projectile's moving. Okay. Obviously, if there's like terrain there, it'll slide along the terrain and all that. We want it to be a little more reliable about the direction that you knock them back. Yeah. So that way, if you're below them and they're walking above you, you shoot the projectile, they'll go the same direction the projectile is going. Gotcha. There yeah. it is. I mean, pretty pretty decent travel distance. Uh, obviously, yes. you mentioned that doesn't scale. That's going to be consistent across all ranks. Yep. The knockback is good. It's going to be directionally focused as well. Some new talents to go alongside it. Any uh, anything else on Soul Gust that I'm forgetting to mention, or is that no, basically nothing. it? I'm just excited to see what people do, especially mm -hmm. with that talent. I want to see when you can reveal someone for a little bit because that we have a decent amount, but nothing for the mage to allow for reveal. So I'm excited. Yeah, this is going to be good stuff. Next thing up on the docket, kind of similar. Uh, we did a gun town change a yep. while back. Big big layout adjustment, and, and you guys have kind of just been hopping around the map, right. keeping things fresh keeping things new, new lines of sight, all that type of stuff. Jade Gardens will be the next point of interest that is receiving a, a sort of an update, facelift, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think as we go in and, and hop around the map, how do you guys look to choose? Like, what's next? What's next on our hit list? How do we want to change uh, Jade Gardens this time Right, around? that's a good question. Uh, a lot of the times what we've kind of been looking at are areas, except for Jade Gardens, that are a little more on the outside of the map, maybe areas that people we want to push people into new areas, right? So yeah. that's always been kind of the focus. With Jade Gardens this time, it was the idea that, hey, we need to kind of lower everything. It's kind of high. And when you get into some of those rivers, they're kill zones, right? Yeah. If you get into some of these bodies of water in Jade Gardens, you have a lot of trouble getting out. So the whole idea was to create more avenues to get back into Jade Gardens and more places of cover when you're actually down there and you're fighting. Yeah, there you go. I like to think of it as you got the wheelchair accessible ramp there yes. at the start of the, at the mouth of the river. Exactly. Or, or mountain, except right now you can jet around everywhere, no problems. Uh, and this is something, you know, before when I first came onto the Realm team, kind of my idea was they had told me, okay, you're going to be doing world design. You know, that's cool. So I started looking at some of this stuff and wanted to move things around, obviously, since Cret. Um, has moved to a different uh, project, I'm like, okay, I have to do a lot of things, but I still want to focus on adding cool stuff to the world. And right now it's small things that I can do, props and lowering and whatnot, but I just wanted to give a little more opportunities for players to move around. Yeah, I mean, right, right off the top of my head, how many times have I died on that hill up to the forge on, on the Jade Gardens? A lot of big battles there, and as you see, you know, our cameraman kind of took that additional little catwalky sort of flank route. And if you're not playing the mage, you know, you might not always have access to that vertical mobility. That's easy to come by. And you were mentioning some of these kill zones or these rivers that yep. are oftentimes tough to navigate in and out. Is that new? The cover here? Yes. So okay. all of it, there was no cover in this at all. It was just like, you're in the water and you've got to be a better shot, right? Because like you have nowhere to go or you need to use your You're punching up, right? for sure. Punching up. So this is going to give the players, especially if you don't feel as confident and you're in a, a fight where you're having to shoot up and they're shooting down into you, they always have the advantage, right? They've got the high ground. So yeah. let's give them a little bit of cover. Let's give them something to hide behind and, and think about what they want to do next. Anakin needs a chance, all right? It's not its not fair to just end it all there with I'm, the high ground. I'm with Anakin, you know? All right, we stand with Anakin here <laughs> <laughs> on the OB-19 patch notes show. Kind of cruising around here. All these little things started feeling new, these little catwalks. Yes. Anything that's like a ramp in or out. It, and are the cliff faces themselves lower? Uh, a couple of, like, a few choice ones are, and they're a little harder to show off, because some of these changes are pretty subtle. But yes, there are quite a few clips where I've just lowered them and lowered everything else with it so you wouldn't really notice off the yeah. bat, right? But it gives a general feel of, like, the abilities. It's easier to get up. It's one of those things, because before, like, a heroic leap or 
a low level sore probably wouldn't get up there, but now it's just going to be a lot easier for a lot of these hills. I think it's fair, and it's definitely good to pay attention to that type of stuff, right? right. As the game philosophy changes, right? Movement abilities, everyone's got one, no one's got one. You can have yeah. two of them, you can have one of them, that type of stuff. It, all of that affects level design. So it's, it's good that you guys are kind of hopping around and making yeah. sure that everything stays up to date and consistent. Now, with all of this, you know, fancy new stuff, mm -hmm. accessibility, we're going to need to communicate with our teammates about yes, we where will. we want to mm -hmm. go, what we want them to pick up, what we need. Obviously, team communication is paramount to success in Realm Royale. So we've got a fun new system, Andy, to help you do just that. Yeah. Yeah, so what we added was uh, just a ping system. So that way, when you click the, I think the default keybind is middle mouse button, it'll put a little ping on the map in world. It'll make a sound to notify to your teammate. Um, so that way you can communicate exactly what you're looking at and what you're going to interact with or potentially what you'd like your teammates to interact with. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just a really quick, easy way to kind of just point things out to the user or the other players. Makes a noise, marks the map. Good for players who don't have mics or are queuing with just autofill. You're just playing with yeah. randoms. And that's part of the app. Good for players who don't have mics or are queuing with just autofill. You're just playing with yeah. randoms. And that's part of the fun is, that, is I think, the, uh, the unspoken word or the random teammate you might get. <laughs> or just playing late at night, as I know we all have. I'm... Plenty of days playing till the sun comes up with uh, with buddies back in the day for sure. And here's the pings. You can kind of see them, and they have the little range indicator. I mean, you could use this for uh, you know a whole slew of reasons, right? Just spam it, get somebody's attention, make them look at you, that type of stuff. But it might not always be enough to just ping. Sometimes you, you need to communicate past that. And, and mm -hmm. I think you got something for us as well on that front. We do. So we basically took um, what we had for doing VGS, for doing sprays and all that, and moved it to this communication wheel. Um, so it has a couple different sections for the chatter, for emotes, and for the tactical um, VGS commands. So this way you can open up this and you can select if you want to do an emote or if you want to communicate about something. So you ping the map and you say, hey, I'm under fire, and you're basically marked exactly where you're under fire from. Gotcha. Um, so just a much easier, more accessible way to communicate without actually using voice Enemy chat or spotted. typing. Perfect. Under fire. Super user friendly. Yeah. That's what all these things are, I think. And on the yeah. other side of that cool. token, there is the take this, the you know, best. in case you want to point mm -hmm. out loot for your teammate. To take exactly. That. Yeah, so you're saying, Josh, we, you know, a lot of these are, or some of these Enemy are VGS, old VGS oh, commands, but some of them have been kind of new, implemented lines um, oh, for frick. the purpose of, you know, communicating in, uh, around the ping system. Right. Take uh, this. Take this. Sort of, uh, That's a new one. In the same vein, PC players used to be able to use some commands like joke and oh, laugh. Frick. And yeah. now joke and laugh have actually been implemented into this new system. So console players will be able to use those as well. Yep. Be good. I gotta Take say, this. like this, the whole wheel I'm thing feels bit. much easier to Whoa. do on con because, like, I, I'm a big fan of VGS, but I always play on PC. And anytime I would go to console, it's like you almost got a like muscle memory, like this like cheat code Whoa. of like down A B X yeah. Y up, and it's like that's how I get you know this. I, I like this is very easy. Like you mentioned, user friendly. Yep. Categories are clear. Very very intuitive in terms of all of your options are right there laid out in front of you. You don't have to do any guesswork and no. Fancy button combinations, really, either. Not, ma really, not many keystrokes, I, I think, to get here. Anything else in terms of ping or communication system that I may have uh, forgot to bring up that you want to mention before we go? No, I think you pretty much covered anything, unless Josh had something. Well, you might have noticed on the first page that you can't equip three emotes and sprays. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so you'll go. get use out of, you know, Battle Pass contains multiple sprays and emotes. So it'd be nice go. to be able to kind of use multiple you know, different sprays and emotes in a single game. Right. Yep, to customize sure. your load out a bit. As you have more options, you know, why, why choose? Bring yeah. them all into the, into the realm <laughs> with you. You never know which ones you're, you're going to want for that situation. That does it for the pings, communication, Jade Gardens, our, our bundle. We're going to move on to balance, one of my favorite sections. And yep. this is where you will take the reins and, and kind of guide us through the... Uh, the scales tipping here, and of pretty, pretty, pretty short, uh, yes. I think, section here. Stone Staff is going to be the first thing up on our docket, yep. and the time between shots has been increased ever so slightly. That's the first thing happening. Yeah. So coming onto the project, I'm not. We're not going to jump super heavy off this first one. Like, hey, let's change a bunch of stuff. But we wanted to change a couple <laughs> things. My first <laughs> act as king is to undo everything the last king did. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we could do that, but we chose eh, maybe not yet but maybe eventually. So this is that idea that we looked at this ability or this weapon that was very powerful. People talked about it a, a lot. A good boy. Yes, <laughs> was a good boy. 
maybe too good. So what we did is we thought, okay, it feels really good at range. Yeah. It feels really powerful. And like, if you're good with it, you're killing people all the time. Like, that's cool, but let's let's tone it down a little bit, add, you know, or just tweak it, maybe not even tone it down. So what we did is we increased the time between shots, right? Maybe if you've played Paladins, maybe if you've checked out Anara since it's her staff, right? It feels a little more similar to that, not quite as extreme. Gotcha. So it's you got a little bit more in between each shot. But what I did to kind of compensate for that is it does a little more damage where you're like, oh, wait, what, okay. that's kind of insane. But what then, the final piece is that we took down the accuracy just a little bit. So when you're ADS'd, it's not a sniper anymore. You're not getting shots across the map, right. which is cool. Maybe not uh, the best feel when you're <laughs> killed by it from across the map. So we just toned that down. There you go. I think that's pretty intuitive. I think all that's, that makes sense for the stone staff. Yeah. That's going to be three quick changes there. Longbow will be the only other weapon seeing changes, and we have increased the gravity drop-off with a max drawn bow shot. Yes. What does that mean exactly? So now you, uh, before when you would take those longbow shots, you could just aim where you wanted to hit them on the body with a fully charged shot, and it would land if they didn't move. Now you need to aim a little above, right? You've got that actual drop-off that you expect. <laughs> you were just above. solving the problem of infinite energy as your <laughs> arrow just went on forever. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's cool. That's very uh, realm. But let's let's tone it down a little. Just yeah. make it a little more of a skill shot and maybe something that you have to compensate for. Would you expect this to be kind of like the sniper, where there is drop-off, but it's not super bad or yes. super egregious unless you're at a really, really long range. You almost don't even have to think about it too often. Right. It's it's actually probably it's like that, because the longbow before was like almost none, or it might have been. Um, uh, I, think it, I think it was none. I used a yeah. lot of longbow. <laughs> kind of for that reason, because I, I hate learning drops of weapons right. and different distances and wind. Where is it? <laughs> All right, that one looks good. I just like I want to just put the crosshair on the damn player and well, then I'm let sorry. it rip. Sorry, I need you to. I need you to bring <laughs> it. I need you to practice. All right, all right. I'll get good. I'll get good for you, Alex. And like we said. Yeah. Oh, oh, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Yeah. One more thing about the idea of these balance changes. One of the key things about this is our element system. That's a big thing yeah. people talk about, and that's not something that we're saying right here, but it's an idea that we're going to be looking at. We're Meaning your at. like legendary element enchant. Yes, so it's gotcha. like your fire, the uh, the ice, the electricity, right? I think that's uh, like which just gives lightning. you the vision. Yes, we're going to be random question I just had. Yeah. Soul gust, the vision talent. Does that apply to your whole team, just or is you. that just to you? Just okay, you. good clarification there. Yeah, but yeah, so the idea is that we will be revisiting elements. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, that's a fun little foreshadow, guys. We're going to move on to bug fixes. That does it for our balance changes. Andy, you're going to take us through majorities. You mentioned yep. you know you like to pay a lot of attention to streams, Reddit threads, things like that. See what people really want to get after. So what have you got for us? This one is fix a small area in Jade Gardens where players could get stuck. Yeah, I mean, that's basically something we constantly look for as well. Right. Given that it's such a gigantic map, it yeah. might be easy for us to not catch one of the things. And even if we do, we still have to make sure that we balance everything else and make sure we fit it in to actually fix Definitely. the collision, make sure it feels smooth, and mm -hmm. try to just reduce those issues as soon as they come up. Cool. So a lot of changes to Jay Gardens coming up. Hopefully you won't get stuck as often. If you were a fan of that spot, I'm not sure exactly where that was, but <laughs> fixed an issue where legendary ice block would heal more than intended. Yeah. I How mean, much more, Andy? I actually don't remember the exact number. <laughs> Do you, you remember the exact I, number? I heard that it was twice as much. Yeah, ah. twice so, you know, just a little 2x, not bad. Gotcha. <laughs> not quite as cold but, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yet another thing that we're just trying to make sure we clean up. Clean it up, yeah. onward and upward. Yeah. Next on the list, fix an issue where the loot goblin would freeze and not drop loot when eliminated. Terrible. That's never happened to me. <laughs> that little, you know, son of a just takes off running. I mean, he's so tanky, and I, you know, I do my best to, like, body block him. That's something one of my yeah. buddies taught me is, is you can body block and get in his way, but sometimes he would just freeze and not drop loot, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those sorts of issues that just kind of took a while to figure out exactly why it happened, and once we figured that out, it was pretty straightforward to fix it. Um, gotcha. So, yeah, we just fix that up once we figure it out, once we know what's going on. And I'm not a big coder, but I always kind of like, is there, what, what was like, what was it? Like, what did it? If you could put um, it in layman's terms. I always think these are, these are kind of fun for me to, to, to listen to. I think to. it was even just something as simple as checking if its health was less than instead of less than or equal to zero. Gotcha. Like, it was just a very simple thing where if you did the exact right amount of damage and brought him to zero, 
almost everything would happen except for the part where it properly dropped loot ah. and like deinitialized them. So we just kind of hang out there and not drop the loot. That's kind of cool. I always like to hear that type of stuff. Fix an issue where keybinds for opening and closing the map differed on console. Yeah, that was um, probably a bit more to figure out exactly why it was happening than I would have liked. But once I figured out what was going on, it was just a little bit of difference between how the keybinds get captured on console versus keyboard and mouse. And essentially, once you opened the map, it wasn't respecting the keybind to close it again. So I just gotcha. did a few changes to make sure it actually respected that keybind and closed it as well. And our main man, cameraman, brought up something about hit detection as well. He said you would uh, officially, but you got an extra yeah, little something, something. Yeah, it definitely should have been on the list. Yeah, that was actually one of the first things I looked at <laughs> when I got on the team, um, was just kind of looking at what was the most frustrating things in the community. And the biggest one was hit detection. And given that I've worked on Paladins for like two and a half years, yeah. and like we share a common code base, so I know a lot about how we handle hit detection, I basically spent like probably a week digging into it, finding ways to reproduce it, and then once I was able to reliably reproduce it, um, implementing fixes for it and testing against it, make sure I can't find any other cases where you shoot a projectile and it looks like it hit, but it didn't hit. Mm. Um, so since I've made my changes, I haven't been able to reproduce any issues, but if you do see any further issues where it looks like something should have hit, please make sure you let us know. Um, you can at me on Reddit or whatever, and we'll take a look at it and see if we can figure <laughs> out what's going on. Could have swore my shot hit there, Andy. There's no way it wasn't me, man. There's just no way. There's a bug here, bro. I don't know. What. <laughs> Address some issues. That's the next thing on our list with T-posing when picking up a new weapon. Yeah, that was actually another programmer that fixed that one. I don't remember what the core issue was, but it was definitely happening. And uh, he spent some time and he kind of dig into it and cool. figure out what's going on and fixed it. Love it. Next issue fixed uh, were the incorrect rune were showing when play spectating another player. Yeah, it was basically showing your runes when you were spectating instead of the person gotcha. you were looking at. And actually, I fixed a couple other issues around spectating. Like, it hides the keybinds when you're not the one playing when you're spectating. It'll actually show damage numbers correctly. Mm. It'll show the team that you're looking at on the map. So that way, like, you have just essentially a clear view as if you are viewing from their eyes. Yeah. Because uh, before, when I first started looking at that, there was just a lot of bits and pieces that just weren't working correctly sure. when you were spectating. So I went ahead and cleaned that up. Awesome. So last one here. Fix an issue where players could see shadows through walls. Continued improvements planned in the future. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the things that once I started looking at what the community cared about and I started seeing that this was happening where it generally only tended to happen indoors where someone was around the corner. Yeah. And the way that our shadows render indoor, unfortunately, allows the shadow to kind of clip through the wall a lot of times. Um, so I was able to thankfully squeeze in a really quick change into OB19. Yeah. Um, but it was our final build, so like I didn't have time to do more. So I put a really quick change in. So it should improve a lot of the issues, but it still, unfortunately, isn't going to be perfect in some yeah. scenarios. Uh, but in probably 90% of the time, it should be good. But I've been continually working on, for 20, an even better solution for it. So that way, if you do not see someone, they will not render shadows unless they're on your team. Because I figure perfect. if they're on your team, it doesn't matter as much. Gotcha. So. And and that's awesome. I appreciate like all the little like layman's terms. Because like I said, I'm not, I'm not a coder by any means. <laughs> but I like to know, like, what was it that was, was doing stuff? And I think this kind of helps everyone out there as well who's not a coder, like, just sort of think about like what makes bugs tick. What right. what is the yeah. game? How is the game yeah. seeing this interaction? And and it can maybe make you a better player or reporting bugs and things like that. You could be a little bit more specific. In the past, you know, this went wrong here, and helps you think about a new situation. At least for me, in my experience, not having any uh, any coding experience, obviously. Any final thoughts from anyone? Anything else that we miss? You guys want to mention before we go? We're wrapping up here. I've got a few things. Okay. Um, so when we think about the soul gust. You throw out the uh, you know the purple head, right? Yeah. Uh, Thor says that's a ram. Hmm. I don't think it's a ram. What do you guys think? <laughs> I mean, there is a mount called the nightmare mount that is very similar, almost exactly the same, and it's and not a ram. That is a horse, right? Yeah. We, I mean, last I checked, it's a horse. <laughs> look at that horse. <laughs> look at that horse. <laughs> look at it go. <laughs> yeah, look at that ram doesn't roll off the tongue. Ah. <laughs> look at that ram. Can't argue with that. You really can't. Any, yeah. any other closing thoughts, or is that what you're going to leave us with, Josh? <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much what I wanted to close out. Look at that 
horse. Look at that horse. My <laughs> friends. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. That's been the OB19 show. New faces here, Alex and Andy. Appreciate it. Hope to see more of you guys around. Of course, Josh, sure. as always, love to see you, bro. That smile <laughs> brightens up my day. Thank you guys so much for watching along. We hope you enjoy the new patch. Continued uh, improvements on the up and up, guys. See you all next time.